people always ask, you know, how do NASCAR drivers go to the bathroom during a race? Like, you hear that one a lot. Well, the answer is, if you can't hold it or you don't sweat it out, you go in yourself. And uh, <laughs> Dale Jr. one time, they normally don't have to go till the end of the race. Yeah. And he ended up go having to go, and it ran down into his seat, and it boiled his ass in his, in his seat from his own urine, which is he, not cool. He boiled his ass. Yes, he did. <laughs> I think I, I might have uh, pissed myself once skating. I like, collided with somebody and... Uh, Man! Yeah. We just did this. And then I was like, I think I'm pissing myself. We're in Gaffney, South Carolina at the Cherokee Speedway, and we're about to watch some stock car racing on a dirt track. We're in the South. It's evident. There's Confederate flags everywhere. Car culture is big here, and it's kind of cool. You have families that race, that their dads will race, and then when they get old enough to race, their dads will put them in the car, then they'll race. There's boys here racing 13, 14 years old. We even have girls that race here. Matter of fact, the week before last, a girl won one of the races. Stock car was born out here. It evolved and then sort of got into a bigger arena. And during that evolution, a lot of these smaller tracks became sort of obsolete and began to shut down. So all through this area are just abandoned racetracks. I'd never been to a racetrack before, dead or alive. But Cherokee is supposed to be the real thing. Every Saturday, diehard fans pack these grandstands to watch hours of racing. We like to see racing, we like to see wrecks, we like to see it all. Around here at this gas and speedway, that is. <laughs> a lot of people have been telling me to look out for car number 71, the white car. Apparently it's got a female driver. I think she's the only one racing, like a field of men. And I think uh, some people don't like that. That was an explosion. Cherokee is a throwback to the Prohibition era when stock car racing began. Moonshiners souped up their cars to outrun the law, then built dirt tracks to prove who was faster. Saturday night at the races became a sensation in the South. But when big money came into the sport in the 70s, it changed everything. Tracks were paved, grandstands packed 100,000 plus, and by the 90s, TV deals and corporate sponsorships had turned NASCAR the big leagues of stock car racing into a billion dollar empire. And it all came from dirt tracks just like this. But what happens when the races are over? Thriving grassroots tracks like Cherokee are a dying breed. And nearby, the original big league track that evolved from them sits empty.
Apparently, North Wilkesboro was the first sanctioned speedway in NASCAR history. A lot of the greats became great here. This speedway means a lot to a lot of people, especially the people in this area and just stock car fans all over. Woo! Yeah, baby! And it means more to no one than superfan Chuck Ellison. I'm primetime Chuck, and I'm here at beautiful North Wilkesboro Speedway. It's a glance back at NASCAR's past, the past that they'd like you to forget. How many times have you been here? This is my third trip. Yeah? Yeah. It's kind of like the mecca of NASCAR, the mecca of stock car racing. I don't think, as far as it goes to abandoned tracks, that you get any bigger than this place. OK. I mean, rocking Size-wise or, or No, in, -wise. in feeling. Look at this wall and tell me that you can't feel the history just coming off this wall, man. It's just got so much soul in it, you know? It's not a jumbotron, it's a... A wall. A painted wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess uh, maybe I'm old-fashioned, but... You're more into walls? Yeah, more into walls. It's kind of like a crucifix to a religious person. Like, a true die-hard NASCAR fan is going to hold that reverence for uh, the, the, the sign, yeah. you yeah. know? For, for people in the South, it's, yeah. It's God and then racing. Wow. This place is really big. What really makes this place special is the layout and the character of it. It was built not by a bunch of engineers, but probably somebody that just said, we need a racetrack, and they cleared out a little area, and whatever the topography of the place was, the geography, yeah. they were just like, OK, we're just going to do it this way. So consequently, now you've got a track that's got attitude. Yeah. And NASCAR's missing that now, because now they've got these cookie cutter tracks. They're all uh, built the same way. They're built to pack in the fans. It doesn't have the same, you got to get up on the wheel and really just get in there, mm, you know? So like the current racing system is what's contributed to places like this being dead? The biggest word I can use is greed. They right. just got so greedy and they wanted to go to bigger markets and bigger things, but they didn't have any plan for sustainability. They said, OK, well, if we go to point B, what's going to happen with point A? And so that's what they've got right now. They've got a sport that's just drifting lackadaisical with no real leadership. Right, yeah. How does it feel to be walking down here on the straightaway? Man, you look at this place and it's like ghosts are everywhere, you know? Every mark on this place, every crack in the track, every piece of rubber, it's a memory and it's a piece of the fire that used to be in this sport. And it's like being in the aftermath of a house fire where all your most precious memories get burned up. Yeah. Like you look at this place and that's what I feel like. I feel like someone burnt my house down. It seemed like an extreme metaphor, but the closing of this track really did hit close to home for Chuck. Growing up, for me, was not easy. Um, both of my parents had problems and marital problems. I witnessed domestic violence and a lot of things when I was younger that, you know, I don't talk a lot about. But one thing that brought my whole family together was this sport. Primetime is a very interesting character. It seems like the passion for the sport comes from a deeper place. Like, it seems like this is his happy place probably because that's where his family came together as a unit and they all shared that. And then it seems like outside of the racetrack, it kind of fell apart and it was really hard for him. So I could see how he has this strong connection to these tracks. And Chuck has a major issue with NASCAR shutting down this track more than any other. For them to say that a place like this is just too small or just isn't worth it anymore, they're fooling themselves. Under the alias Primetime Chuck, he started a one-man movement, Save Stock Car Racing. The sport's in bad trouble. The ratings are down. Profit margins are down. The sponsors and NASCAR have just flat out gotten greedy. People like me are what this sport needs. You need real media. You need somebody to stand up against the grain and tell the truth. How did you get the nickname Primetime? Oh, man, it started out in high school. Um, I used to run with some black dudes in high school, and they would get together before class, and they would have freestyle battles. And I used to go in there and throw some rhymes down, man. Nice. But I haven't done it in years. And it came from a rhyme, something I said about, I'll be at your mom's house between 8 and 11. 
So that's prime time, like that's where it came from. <laughs> and uh You feel it, like uh, freestyling now? Oh man, I don't even, I haven't done it in years. I'm so rusty, like you can't put me on the spot like that. It's about high time that you hit the high wall and got very a wall. That was terrible. Okay, it can't be worse than that. All right. I'm I'm from Canada. All right. <laughs> Yo, they call me primetime. I run three wide in victory lane. I tell you the whole time. Check it out. When I flow, I spit mad rhymes. Brian France can go back and take his behind back behind any garage in NASCAR and let me beat his behind. I'll tell you right now, it's prime time. I'm in the spotlight with Vice. Yo, I'm flowing all night. I got to check right. Write it out. A million bucks. I don't give a f My real name's Chuck. Whoa! Oh, that's all I got, man. That's all I got. <laughs> Primetime had a laundry list of things he missed about North Wilkesboro's heyday. Free parking, cheap tickets, drivers thanking fans before sponsors. And then there was an abandoned ritual on Victory Lane. That's another thing that's missing nowadays is we don't have the real trophy girls. We have a girl in a fire suit. And to me, that's not a trophy girl. A trophy girl needs to be wearing a bikini top, you know? Oh, like a trophy. Yeah. No, 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 no. Don't make it sexist. <laughs> it's nothing like that. It's just people shouldn't be able to tell them that they can't do that if that's what they Oh, no, 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 no. Of course not. No. It's a free country. Yeah. We live in America. But it is what it is. It's a... America. I don't know America. why. America. Yeah, like that. That's right. Yeah. You got it right. You got yeah. it down. Turn your hat a little, crook your hat a little bit sideways, and you'll be ghetto fabulous. That's right. Canada. No, that doesn't work. We didn't see eye to eye on the trophy girl matter but I could definitely feel for primetime struggle to save places like this. This start finish line in particular represents something special to me in my life because I've dedicated a lot of my time and energy and money and heart and soul into trying to bring places like this back. And that's the ultimate goal to get four tires on a race car going right. across this line. Yeah. And that would bring my life some purpose. You seem to be from what I've seen the most committed to this passion. I would rather I would rather die. I would rather stand right here on my knees and let somebody run me over with a race car than let them do what they're doing to the sport. Ooh. I don't know if anyone feels as strongly about this place as primetime, but it definitely feels like something should happen here. It seems like it could go either way. Like, it is definitely savable. Just laying in wait for some screaming machines to rip around it. And I mean, look at it. It's majestic. Carolina. NASCAR was born here. It grew so big, places like this weren't big enough. But before NASCAR, this was dirt racing country. Taking the two. 277 North to Stock Car Heaven, where the racetracks go to die. We're heading to Metro Line of Speedway. It's a classic dirt track that's now abandoned. GPS says hard left. <laughs> GPS said take a left. Here we are in the field. And another field. Oh, I see some of the clay remnants in this grass. This is what we've been looking for. I think behind this fence and that other fence is an abandoned racetrack, untouched for centuries. <laughs> Are those vultures? There's vultures around here. I think this has been shut down for a lot of years. Judging by the uh, 
overgrown nature. Oh, I think we're in the grandstands kind of thing. It's very Roman. It's like a ruin. Ghosts, you hear them? There was so much energy here before, and now it's just back to placid, calm nature. I wanted to get a racer's perspective on the track, so I invited local stock car driver Mitch Sill to come meet me. How you doing? Going? Good. Rick. Rick, I'm Mitch. Great to meet you. Hey, great to meet you. Yeah, thanks for meeting us here. Yeah, not a problem. NASCAR stopped racing on red clay decades ago, but diehards like Mitch would take dirt over asphalt any day. So this closed in the late 90s? Yeah, I think they started running this place back in the 60s and ran all the way up till the late 90s. And uh, It's a good run? Uh, yeah, it was definitely a good run, you know, and it's just sad to see that, you know, a place like this that had so much history, and still sitting dormant. Wow, it's first, it's first time I've uh, been in here and seen it, wow. It kind of gave me chills a little bit, you know, <laughs> just to, I guarantee you back in the day, this place on every Saturday night was slam packed. Everybody's got their chairs and their cushions. Oh yeah, oh gosh, yes, yeah. Mitch grew up going to dirt tracks with his dad in the 80s and 90s. The closing of places like Metro Lina hits close to home for him. I cut my teeth racing at a track called Riverside Speedway in yeah. 2006. They, they closed it down, bulldozed it over, and built a golf course on top of it. Really? I mean, it broke my heart. I mean, I remember, I, I mean, I, I can still remember like yesterday, the first time I drove by that place after they did that. I mean, I sat there right there in the parking lot, and I teared up because it's just, you know, all those memories of, you know, being my first dirt race in, in a car and, you know, my dad being there with me and getting me going with that. My dad raced at that track before I did, you know, and, and it's really? all gone, you know? Yeah, and then you, no one else is gonna be able to follow through with that and continue that legacy there. No, exactly, yeah. but you know, I mean, I can remember my dad when he was racing in the early 90s, every county had a dirt track to go to. Really? I mean, they were just everywhere. Yeah. And I mean, just within the last 15, 20 years, I mean, half of them have shut their doors. Why do you think it got to the state it's at now with like so many tracks closing and? Back in the 50s and 60s, you didn't have video games and, no. you know, computers and all this, you know, yeah. now you got all that, you know, kids are, would rather sit home and play on their video Pretend games. Pretend to race. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretend to race, you yeah. know. It's wild. Yeah, watch out for copperheads. I don't know what they got up your way, but uh, we got snakes around this way. Snakes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you see something brown wiggling on the ground, just run the yeah. other way. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of scary. Uh, yeah. Is that why you wanted me to go first? Yeah, you got boots on. <laughs> if I get bit, just rush me to the hospital, okay? This is pretty awesome right here. Man, I still got the original wall here. So you can tell some people use that wall up too, yeah. <laughs> coming off this corner. Wow, just sitting here looking, you know, I, I, I can almost kind of feel that being in that car, getting that car pointed straight to blast down that straightaway, man. Yeah, coming out oh, of turn yeah. two. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Racing fuel, it's like perfume. Oh really? Man, when, when you you crank that race car up yeah. and smell that burnt race fuel, oh man, it, it just, it does something it's to a, you. It's a gas huffer's it, dream. It, it really is. And just to tell you how bad I got it with that, yeah. They, they make a candle that smells like racing fuel. Really? It's like a little bitty candle. I paid like 20 bucks for it just so I could light it up whenever I wanted to smell racing fuel. So yeah, that, that's how bad. It, you burn that indoors? Yeah, I burn it in the house, yeah. yeah you're, so I can... you're a gas huffer. Uh, okay, right. okay, <laughs> you got me, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that stock car started with moonshiners. Yeah, I mean, you had your prohibition area, you know, I guess that was back in the 20s, you know, yep. and then that kind of started the whole moonshining thing, guys making, you know, liquor in their backyards and stuff like that. And well, then, then from there, you know, the cops started chasing the guys and well, you know, the guys wanted to suit the cars up, you know, to be able to outrun them guys, you know? So these guys who had these souped up cars just wanted somewhere to race them. And, you know, that, that's, they started building these tracks, you know, and that's where them guys started going, you know, and NASCAR's kind of gotten away from that. You know, they've kind of tried to eliminate that image over the years, you know, and kind of almost shunned their, their southern roots. And it's just, it, it's sad to see, you know, but, but that's, that's the beauty of like your, your local 
you know, dirt racing scene, it, it is still a big, a lot like it was, right. you know, back when NASCAR kind of got started. Yeah. You know, that, that outlaw racing kind of, you know, mindset. Yeah. You Do know. you see that sustaining or is it going to disappear? You know, I, I, I'd love to say that it's something that, you know, it would be around forever, but it's just, right. you don't see anybody building new racetracks or dirt tracks. It's just that you're constantly seeing them shut down. Right. You know, and it just didn't seem to be any end in sight with it. It was interesting to learn a little bit of history about the sport coming from the outlaw side of things with the rum runners who would soup up their cars to be faster than the police cars and then they would be like racing each other. That part of it I can relate to in some way with skateboarding because it's sort of similar where it is kind of an outlaw culture. Skaters just, they do it anyway. We're gonna, we're gonna go skateboarding anyway. But like being here and being on the track and listening to uh, Mitch talk about it, I. I wouldn't mind trying it out one day. An abandoned speedway is like an abandoned anything. No matter how good the glory days were, as long as it's in limbo, it's a negative space, a wasteland. Like so many places in America, the landscape of North Carolina is littered with man-made wastelands. Even Charlotte, a big financial hub, is full of vacant property. I always wanted Ollie a sinkhole. We didn't even have to go to fracking country. We just came here to uh, a dead strip mall. I'd say since the beginning of skateboarding, we've repurposed abandoned places and used them to skate. Finding like embankments and ditches and stuff like that and uh, we'll even like bring materials and build stuff there to skate. Oh that thing looks sick. There's a little DIY quarter pipe over here. Some people might see this as like a cement blob but I see it as like endless joy or at least five minutes of joy. We just hooked up with the Black Sheep Skate Shop team at this DIY spot they built. There's this old foundation and they put a ledge in. It's pretty fun and these guys rip. This used to be called Eastland Mall. It was a big mall that like years ago was like the hot spot kind of popping mall. And I think this area just kind of ran down a little bit. And uh, yeah, for the last 15 years, it's just been nothing. Lots of room for a skate park. There's actually not a public skate park anywhere in the city. We don't have a free park at all. So we've kind of just stepped up to the plate and built stuff on our own. Yeah, you got it. And this is just maybe a couple weeks old. So hopefully can add on more stuff. Yeah. So long as it stays vacant and nobody, you know, messes with us or anything, then yeah, we're going to try to keep building and make a bigger spot. And you put a bunch of money and time into it and then they tear it down. And that sucks and that's happened like five or six times here. These guys have built DIY spots at abandoned foundations and vacant lots all over the city. But apparently, these places are not zoned for fun. So this is uh, one of the foundations we had kind of a little skate park built on. Six weeks ago, the city came in and knocked it all down. It looks like there's still a little kicker, kicker ramp left. This was a manual pad, and it's come in and knock it all down. They crushed it down and didn't even do anything with it. Since we don't have a skate park, and there's tons of just abandoned building foundations that we just kind of come in and make do with what we can and build our own stuff. We had three DIYs and each one of them got torn down by the city. Started out as nothing, you do something productive, the city turns it back to nothing. 
Skater's going to skate regardless. <laughs> Skater's going to skate. Skater's going to skate. Skater's going to skate regardless, torn down or not, we're going to skate it. From that tall building for about two or three blocks that way, there's nothing here. Abandoned. The lame part is that these kids are doing something positive with these places that are like literally negative space. They're getting shut down out of fear of someone suing somebody, which is super sad. You're afraid you're gonna get sued. You don't want to get sued. And you look at every which way that you could be sued and you stop it from happening. Welcome to the land of the free. Sign a waiver first. We just pulled up to this ditch that's in this residential neighborhood. Whoa, this spot's cool. It's like drop into a snake run and then a gap with a ledge in it. Roll through here, go low, high, crack a ollie. No sun gonna shine this day. Try to remember there's a pole on the landing. Or what do you call that? A tube? A pipe? The death tunnel? Death tunnel. There's a death tunnel on the landing. It's so fun. It's scary. You get a lot of speed going down that hill. Simple in theory, not in uh, theory. I have a headache, I'm bleeding. Can't complain though. Nice out. I'm up in the Blue Ridge Mountains. There's a racetrack up here called Mountain View, and it's been abandoned for, I think, around 20 years, but recently has been resurrected. And Mike, the owner, has offered to let me use his race car to rip around the course on. I've never raced a vehicle on a racetrack before. On the scale of scared to stoked for racing on a track, I'd say I am right in the middle. I'm gonna pull up next to this race car. Rick. Hey, Jake. Jake, Jake good to meet you. Guy. I'm Mike. Hey, Mike. From Motor. Rick, good to meet you. How you doing? Thanks for having us. Yeah, no problem. You think you can handle that bad boy? This guy over here? <laughs> I think so. Maybe. I'll give you a quick once over of the car here. Awesome. It's snottier than it looks, so. It looks pretty snotty still. Yeah. It's <laughs> not your typical Mustang that you would see on the street. I don't think I've ever driven a Mustang, let alone an untypical. How long was it uh, closed for before you reopened? 17 years. 17 years of yes, the shutter? Yes, it's been shut down for 17 years. A lot of people say when they come in, it's a walk back in time here because a lot of facilities are a little more modern, but this is grassroots racing at its finest here. After visiting some dead speedways, it was cool to see one become undead. It's a quarter mile, slightly banked, pure clay oval. The track safety is just a wall concrete wall around the bottom and the top of the track, so. It looks really low over there. Yeah, some spots are a little low, but for the most part, the track wall is about the same around. Okay. And we did have a guy uh, leave the racing surface last week and go over the backstretch wall. His car was totaled or what? Uh, it was tore up a little bit, but it wasn't enough to where he couldn't keep racing. How did it happen? 
Uh, he actually went over the front end of another car and it, oh. it steered him right over the wall. Oh. So that was the second time since the track's been built that somebody's gone out of here. No way. So, yep. It's a shorter track, so I feel less nervous, but it seems like there's more hazards though, like a low fence and like a corner you can crash into. So that bumped up me being nervous again. Here comes a lawnmower. I was really stoked on the female driver over at Cherokee. Uh, her name's Braden, and she drives the white car number 71. And we're gonna have her come out here and give me a little coaching on how to rip around these tracks. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, I'm Rick. Braden, nice to meet you. Great to meet you, thanks for helping out. Oh yeah, you ready? Uh, uh, <laughs> you're my crew chief? Yeah. I saw you race the other night and it was awesome. Everybody in the stands was like, see that car number 71? <laughs> yeah. What's funny is a lot of people come to the track and they don't understand that it's their first time coming. And yeah. I'll come up to them like, hey, do you drive that car? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, we didn't know you were a girl. And like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like to be a girl driver? It's different because you're the only one. Right. And no matter what, you always have attention on you. You always have so much pressure. Like yeah. tonight, I'm sure you feel a lot of pressure. It's your first time. A little bit. What's it going to take? Are you scared? Yeah. Do I need to be? If you don't have nerves when you get in a race car, you, need, you don't need to get in it. All right. And then I need a fireproof suit. I don't know if you'll get in it, but. Yeah. I can keep my pants on. Uh, or should I go into my go uh, boxer in, shorts? You should go into yeah. your boxer shorts. Okay. You should probably, yeah. All right. I'll be a minute. I'm going to use Braden's suit and helmet because I don't have a suit and helmet, and most of the guys here are pretty big, and I'm kind of big, but not pretty big, so Braden's closer to my size and maybe aesthetic. <laughs> I would say it's probably the first time that I've actually mentored someone who has no background in racing. It's tight. I can't get the zipper. Pinched. Do I have to be able to zip it all the way up? This will keep me fireproof, right? Yeah, sure. That Velcro's yeah. there, and then this kind of Velcro's across. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll cover the belly. Yeah, hey. <laughs> I don't know if I can get my leg over it with these pants. I was just thinking. I'll get them both. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And that's probably not going to feel good. It's going to go. There we go. The tighter you are in the seat and the less you move around, the easier it is to drive. You feel tight, you feel good. Yeah, I feel good. Okay. This is so janky. <laughs> well, my suit doesn't fit. I don't know if I fit in the car right. Crotch belt's pretty tight. <laughs> Helmet time. If something happens you need to get out real fast, just mash that button in and pull yep. it out. Okay. okay. Make sure it clicks good. Why would he have to get out real fast? Mainly if it caught on fire. But I mean, if he was to flip over and it's upside down or anything like that, you would want to make sure you got out pretty fast. I guess I got to learn how to turn on the car. Right, Feels like a monster to me. Mountain View Speedway, back from the dead. An experienced racer flew over the concrete wall here just last week. As I revved up Mike's Mustang, I tried not to think about that.
Sitting in here for this long, I can totally tell why people are into the racing car fumes. It's so, so much fumes in here right now. It felt really fun. It felt really hard for me to control. And I'm so stoked I didn't hit the wall. I was sure I was just going to go turn sideways and go straight into a wall. If you're going to hit the wall, the best part to hit the wall is on this side. Yeah, I was going to head on. Yeah, I was no. going to wreck Mike's motor. I was, yeah, it was going to be great. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. <laughs> the resurrection of this old dirt track is an exception to the rule here in North Carolina. Stock car racing was huge in these parts for decades. But it's not like it used to be. There's no more races to get rained out at Cleveland County Speedway. NASCAR held races here in the 50s and 60s, and grassroots racing continued until just a few years ago. Seems like it would have been a pretty lively track. It's set up pretty, pretty well. There's a lot of stands and a pretty good view. 30 miles west, Harris Speedway is the latest to fall on hard times. It shut down halfway through the season. Dude, look at that car. The caretaker dropped by to show me around. You're the Speedway police? Yes, sir. I'm in charge of watching it and everything for them. Security, police? Yeah. Guard dog? That's my ears right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he lets me know if he's anything trying to sneak up on you when you get busy or something, you know. <laughs> See you soon, buddy. Here at Harris, Ronnie is the last man standing. He's worked here since 2003, when everything in his life disappeared. Lost my wife, lost my job, I lost my car, a little dog died. Wow. So, so the track is your life? Yeah. Wow. I ain't got it. Really ain't got nothing. Nowadays, Ronnie considers himself a bit of a lawman, but back in the day, he ran from the law in a souped up car full of booze. Yeah, I used to run that stuff up there in the mountains. Really? Used to be a moonshiner? Golden Valley. Wow. How was that? I, that was fun back then. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they couldn't out drive me for no reason at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we heard that the stock car racing started from the moonshiners yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Like fixing up the cars to get some speed and chase yeah. to get away from the law. Uh, they think mine's just a regular little old Chevrolet. They think that? Yeah. But is it? The motor ain't. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been clocked at 240. Really? Yeah. You ever been in a wreck? I've been in a few of them. I've had a train run over me. I've had an 18 wheeler to run over me. I had two pickup trucks run over me, and I had electricity to run over me. <laughs> so, really, all together, I should have already been gone. Why are you hanging around a racetrack if you're prone to be getting run over? I don't know. I just ain't scared of them. I mean, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I'll walk out there in front of them, you know. Ronnie might be indestructible, but he's not sure his county can survive losing this speedway. He's holding out hope it'll return for next year. 
I'm afraid there wouldn't be no community if it wasn't for this track. I've had people come down here on Saturday nights think they're racing, bring the race cars and stuff. Well, I'd have to come down here and give them the bad news. Mm -hmm. There ain't no racing. This county's counting on this track. Yeah. You know. Are there a lot of tracks around here? Not too many. No. Not like he used to 20 or 30 years ago. What was it like then? Well, at one time, there's probably about 30 of them around here. 30 tracks right around here? Yeah. Time ain't like it was 50 years ago. I can tell you that. Yeah. People ain't the same. Do you think that uh, racing is dying out? Well, around in this section, it is. Really? I was hoping this one wouldn't go down, you know, because that's where I'm at. <laughs> So, yeah, this is your spot. Yeah. So. Well, I hope it stays. We just met up with Ronnie, the caretaker here at Harris Speedway. He was saying if this track wasn't here, there would be no community. Seems like this is his life here, and uh, I mean, I really hope it sticks around for his sake. Maybe it's so entrenched here that it'll never stop. It'll just kind of go through a slump, and. Uh, I don't know, I feel like racing is in, in the blood out here. It's definitely in the lungs. You tried to summon Satan, but screwed up the incantation. And left an open portal on your parents' kitchen wall. And the demons you released that day stayed with you and all you were. Screaming in your ear, kill them all. Metro Lina and North Wilkesboro are graveyards in the birthplace of stock car racing. But just because a bunch of speedways are shutting down doesn't mean the sport is going extinct. True fans and racers bring racetracks to life no matter how old or beat up they are. And as long as the diehards are around, racing will never die. You can worry about the future. You can worry about the past. You can worry about how long this curse is going to last. You were walking through the park one night, angry looking for a fight, and you heard a busker playing the accordion. He stuck him twice and down he fell, and sealed your passage straight to hell, and you knew at once that you would kill again. You can worry about the past You can worry about how long This curse is gonna last